Hi, I'm Ali. Today's problem is called exclusive time of functions, and you will see later on this video what it means. Also, this problem has been mostly asked by Facebook and Amazon. Now, let's read the problem together. The question says, on a single threaded CPU, we execute a program containing n functions. Each function has a unique ID between 0 and n-1. Function calls are stored in a call stack. So we have a stack for function calls that we have on the single threaded CPU. When a function call starts, so for example, when function f1 is called, its ID is being pushed to the stack. And also based on the question, when it's finished, it's being popped from the stack. Then the question says, the function whose ID is at the top of the stack is the current function being executed. So for example, here, as f1 is the top ID in the stack, it's the current function that is being executed. And if we have another function on top of it, for example, f2, this is the current function. Each time a function starts or ends, we write a log with the ID, whether it is started or ended, and the timestamp. And that's also clear. It also says that you are given a list of logs, where logs i represents the ith log message formatted as a string, that we have first a function ID, and then it specifies whether it's been started or ended, and the timestamp. So for example, we have something like this. And it means that function ID with ID 0 has been started at timestamp 3. There is an important point that the question gave us that a function can be called multiple times, possibly recursively. So, for example, when we have f1 here and f2, and again we have f1, before, I mean before the f1 has been finished, it means it's a recursive call because by the time that we are in F1 and its work hasn't been finished, it has been called again. And that, that means that the function has called itself. So it is a recursive function. Uh, then it says a function's exclusive time. So this is the definition of a uh, exclusive time for each function. Is the sum of execution times for all function calls in the program. For example, if a function is called twice and one call executing for two time units and another call executing for one time unit, the exclusive time is three. And it asks us to return the exclusive time of each function in an array where the value at the ith index represents the exclusive time for the function with id i. So let's see this example to clarify this question more. So this is the input format that we have. As you can see, it gave us the number of functions that we have, and this is the log. So we have a function that with id zero and another with id one. So the function with id zero has been started at zero, as you can see here, it's been started here. And then the function with id one has been started at timestamp two. So it means that the zero one the zero function has been executed for about two timestamp and then function one has been called. And then function one has been ended at five, that you can see here. And then again, zero has been executed for another timestamp and it's been ended at six. So as you can see, the zero function has been executed for two timestamps here and one timestamp here. So the Exclusive time for function 0 is 3. And function 1 has been executed for 4 timestamps. So its exclusive time is 4. There is another thing that we have to pay attention to that. So as you can see, each timestamp has a start point and also an end point. So for example here, when it says that the function has been ended at 5, it's actually at the beginning of six. So in order to calculate the time, we have to consider that as six. 
And if we don't do that, we will make a mistake in uh, calculating exclusive times. And you'll see this problem on the next section when I will talk about the suitable algorithm. In order to explain the algorithm, we need three things. A stack to keep track of the functions that are being called, and a variable to save the last timestamp in the log, and the answer array to calculate and return the exclusive time of each function. Now let's apply the algorithm to this example. Look at the first log. It's about function with id 0, and it says that it's been started at timestamp 0. So the last timestamp would be 0 now, and we also push the function with id 0 to the stack, and also the answer array for function 0 is 0 now because it's been executed for zero amount of time. Then we have zero start two, so it means that function zero has been started or called at timestamp two again. And what should we understand from this? The function zero was executing, and again, it's been called. So it's a recursive call, because there is no other function that has been called in between, so it's a recursive call. And what should we do? We, we see the current timestamp and uh, compare it with the last timestamp that we had and we subtract the current with the last to calculate the exclusive amount of time for function 0 that has been executed. So 2 minus 0 is 2 so we update the answer array with 2 and also the last timestamp now is 2 and we also push the function with id 0 again to the stack. Then we have 0 and 5, so function 0 has been ended at timestamp 5. But before I calculate the, the things and update these variables, I should remind you about a point that I mentioned on the last section. So when the function has been ended at 0, at, sorry, at 5, it means that it's been ended at the end of 5. Because, you know, at this between start and end of each timestamp, there is a time unit. So if I say, okay, so it's been ended at 5, uh, and calculate these variables based on that, I will make a mistake in calculating the exclusive amount of time. And that's because of the time unit that is here. So when a function ends at something, it means it ends at the end of that timestamp. So actually, it's at the beginning of 6. So we consider this as 6 and calculate the variables. So the function 0 has been ended at time 6. Okay, again, we compared these two. So this 6, 6 minus 2 is 4, and we add it to uh, the exclusive amount of time for function 0. So 4 plus 2 is 6. And we also update this with 6. And we also pop 0 from the stack. Then we have 1 start 6. So function 1 function with id1 has been started or called at timestamp 6 and you know starts are the beginning so there is no need to uh, add anything to them or uh, subtract anything from them so it's been started at 6 and the last timestamp is also 6 so it means it's not executed uh, or it's been executed for uh, 0 timestamps and uh, we also update this so as it was 6, it's the same. There is no need to update that. And we also push the function with id1 to the stack. Then we have 1 and 6. And be careful that this 6 is 7 because it's end. So 7 minus 6 is 1. And we update the answer array. So we add 1 to this. And we also update the last timestamp, which is now 7. And we also pop one from the stack. Then again, we have uh, ended the zero function at time step seven. So, you know, the, the first call of uh, function zero. And again, it's eight. So eight minus seven is one. And we uh, add that to six. So it, the exclusive amount of time for function zero is seven. Uh, and we also update the last timestamp. So it's eight. And we also pop 0 from the stack. So the, the final answer is 7 and 1. So 
this means that function one, sorry, function zero has been executed for seven timestamps or the exclusive time of function zero is seven and the exclusive time for function uh, one is one. Okay, so now let's see how should we implement this algorithm in the code section. On the code, we have the stack to push the function IDs of that and the last log timestamp or last timestamp that we saved and also the answer array. Then we have a for loop and in this for loop, we loop over each log in the logs array. And first of all, we split that by colons and the first item, so this one, is the function ID. The second one is specifying that whether the function started or ended. So I declared a boolean variable is start to specify whether it's been started or ended. And then the third item is the timestamp that we have. Then if the function uh, hasn't been started or it's been ended, we increment timestamp by one. And that's due to the uh, start and end of each timestamp that I talked on the algorithm section that uh, makes some problem for us in calculating the exclusive time. So we just add one to that to uh, do not make mistake in our calculations. And then if the stack is not empty, so it means that some function has been started, uh, we take the top ID from the stack as the current function ID and we calculate the exclusive time for that function in the answer array. So this is the same as what we did on the algorithm section. We just took the current timestamp uh, of the current function on the stack and then subtracted that with the last log timestamp or last timestamp to calculate uh, the exclusive time for that function. And then we check if uh, a function has been started we uh, push the function ID to the stack, uh, the same as the algorithm section, and if it's been ended, we just pop it from the stack. And after all, we just update the last log timestamp with the current timestamp for the next iteration and calculation. And after the for loop has been finished, we return the answer array uh, as the answer that we have. Now let's submit the code in leadcode.com and see the results. So it's been accepted. The time complexity of this algorithm is an order of n, and that's because we loop over the logs array just once. And the space complexity is also an order of n because we just stored the stack in the memory. I hope you found this video helpful. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends so we can help more software engineers to be prepared for their interviews.